Hi, I'm Tommy from Indy Tommy Tips, and I'm here today to show you how to restore this Power Wheels car that's about 25 years old, and I'm going to restore it to look brand new using Krylon paints. I picked up this little car for my three-year-old granddaughter at the Goodwill store for less than $30. I tested the battery and the forward and reverse lever, and it works perfect. As you could see, the colors on the plastic have faded, and the plastic is starting to chalk and become powdery. Chalking occurs as plastic, paints, and sealers begin to deteriorate. More about chalking later when I show you how to properly wash, dry, prep, and prepare the vehicle for paint. I mentioned that I'm restoring this car from my granddaughter and she loves the colors pink and purple. So I'm gonna restore most of this car with those two colors. The black interior components, like the steering wheel, and all these little knobs, I'll spray these using a black plastic spray. The other sections of the car, like the seat and the wheels, I'll simply use a clear coat spray to restore it to its original look. Like I did in my other video, where I demonstrated how to restore faded plastic shutters using Krylon clear coat paint. We're gonna be disassembling this little vehicle piece by piece. Then we're gonna clean it up. So let's get started. I'm gonna use a drill with a Phillips head to remove the screws. These rusted screws, I'll replace them with stainless steel screws. Um, a lot of the screws in different places that held the windshield and, and the bumper. All the screws are rusted, so rather than putting them back in or paint them, I'll uh, replace them. To keep things organized and so you don't lose all the little parts, it's a great idea to use a Ziploc bag or a small plastic container. And for larger items, get yourself a large plastic bin and place everything, including your small parts container, inside of the bin. I'm going to continue to remove the plastic parts. Using a putty knife, I'll slowly pry apart the plastic bumper. Spray down the old decals with a solvent cleaner. After waiting about 10 minutes, you'll notice that the stickers and the decals really come off easy. Other stickers, like the ones on the sides of the wheels, can be very difficult to get off. So I'm soaking them in a large tub of hot water for about 30 minutes. With the help of my purple cleaner spray and a putty knife, I'm able to remove the decals and the remaining glue residue on the wheels. Here's the windshield, dashboard, the hood, the seat, and the grill. These round sockets where the fake headlight reflectors once were in place, well, I'm going to replace them with these real battery-operated LED lights. Here's the seat, which I'll spray with a clear coat spray. I don't need black plastic spray paint because the clear coat is going to make it look just like new again. Here's the hood latches. Had to be careful not to break off the spring and screw at the bottom. Not going to be able to replace these, so I'll just spray the rusted metal with some primer and clear coat to seal out future rust. Here's the chassis on its side. I still have to remove the wheels. To remove the wheels, loosen this cap with a screwdriver, and then using a pair of needle nose pliers, carefully pry off the retaining clips. Remove the wheels and set them aside. Here's the gas cap, a plastic clip that sits in the center of the wheel, and the clip that locks the steering wheel down to the column rod. And here in New Jersey, it's a warm, sunny day. It's 60 degrees outside, and it's perfect for washing the car again, sanding, prepping, and priming. Here's the body or the chassis of the car, whatever you want to call it. Some of these areas that are shiny need to be sandpapered. I like to use wet sandpaper, probably 400. Wet the sandpaper, keep it wet. And you would sand these shiny areas 
because you want to promote adhesion um, by the primer. You, again, you don't want to just put paint over this stuff. Some type of a flexible primer will adhere to the body, the surface, and once that's dry, you know, read the label, then you would spray it with plastic-based paints. So I don't have to constantly bend over and hurt my back, I set the vehicle up on a pair of wooden horses. Here's the chassis upside down. I washed the car earlier in the day. I'll be wet sanding this car with water and 400 grit black sandpaper. I'll actually sand the entire car, especially the shiny areas on the fenders where the decals once were to promote good adhesion for the primer. Earlier, I had talked about chalking. And while you're wet sanding the plastic, you want to sand the surface so it becomes slightly dull, not shiny, making sure you sand all the loose plastic debris away so it doesn't get layered underneath of the paint. Well, I'm done wet sanding and rinsing, so I tilted the car on its side to allow the water to run off and to dry in the sun. Later, I'll wipe away any remaining water drops. Use the alcohol and water solution and a clean, lint-free cloth to remove any miscellaneous oils or dirt that may be left behind on the plastic. Oils and dirt, or even fingerprints for that matter, could prevent the primer from adhering properly to the plastic surface. This is an important step that you don't want to neglect. And I learned that prepping properly prior to painting is everything. Wow, that's a lot of peas in one sentence. Is it prepping properly prior to painting or is it properly prepping prior to painting? Whatever. Whatever. I had washed these plastic parts previously with the, the plastic cleaner, purple plastic cleaner, and really removed all the grease and dirt. So now I'm rinsing it off. I'll let this dry completely while the grill and other parts are still drying. I cleaned these black items down with the alcohol and water mixture earlier. Some of these items are a little bit too dull, so I'm going to spray them with black Krylon plastic paint. Later, I can touch them up with a clear coat to seal out the color and to preserve it. To mix the paint properly, shake the can. And once you hear the ball rattling, shake it for about two more minutes. Now I'm using satin on the seat, whereas I used the gloss on the wheels. When spraying, always keep a wet edge, left to right. using many coats, not just one heavy one. Now I'm gonna stop and let it cure for a while. Now I'm applying primer to the sides of the car. Notice how I'm using a left to right sweeping motion. I'm also not coating the entire car in primer all in one pass. I'm using multiple light coats to cover the surface evenly. You should wait at least five minutes between coats to allow the paint to start to cure. Also, never paint in the hot sun because it'll dry too quickly and it will not adhere properly to the surface. An ideal temperature would be about 80 degrees with an overcast sky. Be certain that the surface that you're spraying upon is dry and free from dirt. Some people use a tack cloth to remove fine dust. When applying primers or paints, make sure that you apply three or four light coats, otherwise the paint will run. Applying just one heavy coat all at one time could cause the paint to peel off later. The primer on the grill has cured, so I'm starting to spray the grill with the Krylon pink paint. I suspended the grill with some mini bungee cords 
so I can shoot easily in between and around the channels and grooves. And of course, I'm applying three to four light coats so it dries properly. While the grill and other parts are still drying, I'm applying the Krylon pink paint to the hubcaps. Here are the hubcaps, almost completely coated in pink. I'm actually going to allow these to dry overnight in my warm basement so they cure thoroughly. Tomorrow, I'll apply the final coat. It's better to put a bunch of light coats, striping it on left to right, than one or two heavy coats where it'll drip. Now make sure you tape off the areas of the car that you don't want the paint to adhere to, like the shift stick and the gas pedal. Now let's listen to some canned music as we time lapse through this video. this mat for about 12 bucks. I'm going to cut a hole in it here so it fits around the gas pedal. missing reflectors so I picked these up at Walmart two comes in a pack it has these sticky pads that come in the back they're no good so what I did is, is I drilled holes in them first with a very small bit and then a larger bit work my way through also you can see that the Jeep's front fender is of curved nature and this is flat it doesn't sit properly so I took these other guys laid them on the side of a table and heated them with a heat gun and put a little curve to it. I laid it on the edge of a table and then I pushed it down with a screwdriver long ways. Sorry I couldn't demo that because I couldn't shoot with one hand and um, heat gun at the same time. The back had these fake tail lights but rather than use that 
I decided to use these real reflectors they got at Walmart. They're about $2 for a two pack and I drilled holes in them and I'm gonna attach them there. Well, there you have it. Here's the before and here's the after video of the Power Wheels car I restored. And when my granddaughter sees this car and drives it, she's gonna love it. She'll think I bought her a brand new Power Wheels car, which would probably cost me more than $350. This new car will stand the test of time and look new for many years to come because I prepped it properly and used the right paints.